Hi guys, we've got a quick little project on the bench today that I think will be kind of interesting and uh, good for a lot of people to know just to kind of put out there. Not a whole lot of troubleshooting, nothing real fancy, but we'll be changing the motor on this little Bosch drill, and I say little, it's a half inch drive hammer drill, 18 volt battery, you know, kind of a, a run of the mill workhorse of a drill, um, but Apparently the guy using it was trying to drill some really big holes, like a six inch hole saw in plywood and things like that. And the drill got really, really hot and burnt the motor up. And, you know, troubleshooting this is really, really simple. I mean, when you crack the case on these, normally it's the smell that'll give it away. It's kind of a burnt, waxy little smell that happens. And it, it's really apparent. And I mean, if we look here, we can see a little bit of sooting uh, that's happening on the motor case. So that shows that that wax did in fact start burning and it's shorting out windings in the motor and stuff. So the next step we're going to do here is we're going to pull the gearbox off of this thing because we want to get right to this motor. Now, you could say that maybe the gearbox is actually locking up on here, but we would be getting something out of the motor. We would get really, really high, high current draws if there was something going on with the gearbox. So replacing these motors is extremely simple, guys. A lot of people throw these drills away when they're actually very repairable. Now, I will say that I am not a fan of Bosch. I'm a huge Milwaukee fan, but this belongs to a friend of mine, and so I'm helping him out by just getting this thing fixed up, and I think it makes an interesting video. You know, a lot of people don't realize how easy it is to fix these things for way less than, than buying a new drill. I believe that this is a $150 to $200 drill. While the motor itself was only about 55 bucks, and we got it in about a week. So, really easy, easy fix here. I'm going to start off by putting some flux on these terminals. Uh, these motors are soldered in, which, uh, I just, I don't feel like that's the best thing for them. I really think that they should be spade connected, but... Still, it doesn't make it too much more complicated if you've already got a soldering iron. But we're going to come in on this terminal, and we're just going to start heating it up. I've got the iron set to 675. I may have to turn that up some, because it is a really big pad. It may have trouble melting. And I've got my larger chisel tip on here. And we may even go ahead and give it some solder just to get things started here. Try to give us a little bit more thermal contact. There we go. So, we'll just pluck that right off of there. And we'll repeat that process with the red terminal. Also, make sure whenever you do these things that you take note of which terminal goes on which. Uh, you can take a picture first, you can put videos up on YouTube and always go back and watch them. That's always a really, really helpful thing to do. So we've got this motor off, and it really, you can, this motor is really difficult to turn. I mean, it's actually completely locked up. Oh, there we go. So, if you get motors that are like that, that are, don't want to turn, there's normally two reasons for that. One could be that the bearings are shot, which I didn't suspect that in this one. But what really happens on these, most of the time, if the motors are su suspected of being burnt up, is that when that, ends up, that lacquer, that waxy material on those windings melts, it will actually weld the motor down. And not weld metal to metal, but basically just glue itself together. So you can see that I actually 
we managed to break it loose with the pliers and it's spinning now and we might actually get some life from this motor I'm not gonna hold my breath on it but even if we do we don't want to put this thing back in service because it's just gonna burn up again it's just gonna overheat it's gonna be way weaker than it was in the day it was born and just see there Actually, it's also drawing every bit of what my power supply can give it. We were right up at the five amps, bumping the cold, the the current control on that thing. But you can see that this motor actually does work. But we're not. We're not going to put it back in that drill. That's just, that would be dumb to do. I don't like getting things back in a week and it's burnt up and they're looking at you like you're crazy. So I think what we're going to do on these pads here, first of all, let's see if we can actually turn this enough. Look at that big diode in there that they're using for input protection. That's, that's pretty cool. And then I think this, I think this is supposed to be thermal protection. That never seems to work on these drills. Let's see if I can. Yeah, I believe that that's going to be a thermal protector, just a little thermal circuit breaker. But it, it never, I, I see these on so many things. On DeWalt 6-inch grinders, they use them. But for some reason, the motors always burn up before that thing seems to kick in. We're just going to get this solder melted and wicked off right here. Or sucked off, not wicked off. Also guys, don't forget, we are actually wearing our safety glasses here. And we don't need to get 100% of it off because we're all going to put some fresh stuff right on top of it. But this is just to get most of that old stuff off. I think that'll be pretty good. And we'll lay a little bit more flux just to keep things interesting. Also, just for the sake of comparison, let's look real quick and see what happens with this. This is the newer motor. My power supply is not happy with it. Oh, let's uh. Bring that to 18 volts. Yeah, this one draws even more from my power supply, which is kind of to be expected because it is a healthier motor, so it's going to have all that power that it can deliver right there on a, on a dime. Uh, this, I believe, is a little ferrite bead. Uh, they're probably just using that to kill a little bit of the noise that the motor can actually produce and send that back into the the drill. I, I really don't know guys. It's just there. Alright, so let's see if we can just tack this into place real soft. Um, well, we're gonna have to Pre-melt a little solder on there. And there we go. That's what we were looking for. We'll come back and add a little bit more in a minute. 
I want to get both of these soldered on first. I don't know. You really, you, know, you really need three hands to solder. Alright, so this is just going to be reassembly on this drill. I figured I wouldn't put y'all guys through that. It's pretty simple. Uh, a tr little tricky part on there is actually that little ferrite sleeve is to get the wires and stuff are really short on that motor. Is to get them to pop just right into the little pocket that they go in. And then once you've got that, it's pretty simple to get the trigger and stuff. Uh, watch on the... Uh, direction control that has to slide into a little notch and pop in it's really once you get in there it's really obvious to see but once you get those parts set in um, there's also a little spring at the back side of the battery clip that goes in a little pocket make sure you get that in there really well and then put the other side of the case on you can screw all those screws down on there well um, I'm sorry the gearbox we forgot to put the gearbox in that's one of the first things you'll do and uh, that's just a really easy alignment on the motor shaft and pop that in but after that you get the other side of the case on get it all screwed down and then there's a little ring well actually first there's a little it almost looks like a staple that needs to slip in there it's really important not to forget that that's the only thing on the front top part of that drill before the gearbox that actually holds it together and then you'll slip a collar on over that and that'll have four screws in it that'll help tie everything together but if you don't put that staple you'll you'll find that whenever you're using the drill you'll get a lot more wobble than you normally would um, other than that that's pretty much it to putting this thing together I mean like I said guys these drills are really simple and really easy to fix especially on burning motors up on these brushless drills, that's going to be your most common fault besides batteries going out. And if you have good batteries, it's normally worthwhile to fix these drills. Well, guys, uh, that's pretty much all there is to changing out those bat those motors on those drills. Uh, I wish I had it to show you, but when my buddy brought his battery... He slapped it on, tried it out, and took off with the drill because he needed it for a project right away. So, I hope y'all learned a little bit on how easy it is to fix some of the things with these drills that will make a lot of people just throw them away. And I also want to say uh, that this weekend, I actually broke 10,000 views on my channel and also 50 subscribers. I think I'm up to 53 or 54 right now. So, uh, I know it's in the major scope of YouTube, that's not a whole lot, but to me it is, guys. So, I just wanted to say thank y'all to everyone who subscribes and watches my videos, and hopefully we'll keep progressing on this channel and keep on having successful repairs and keep on having failures because that's really where we learn. Uh, I'm also trying to be a little bit more official in how I learn electronics. I have ordered uh, a basic fundamentals uh, little course thing that I'm going to start taking to try to really know what I'm doing instead of just guessing blindly. But once again guys, thanks for watching. Uh, if you haven't already subscribed, be sure to like, subscribe, share, and I will see y'all next time.